update. My mom, 60 female, is still pressuring me, 25 female, to add me as a third person on her new $820,000 mortgage. I really don't want to, as my husband and I are looking to buy our own home. She states doing this will build my credit for new mortgage down the line. Original post My 25 female mother, 60 female, and her boyfriend, 60 male, had a house in Ottawa, which was a nice home. She's always hated a home for reasons I think could have easily been renovated, like new shower tiles, new doors, or adding basic finishes to the basement. It was a new build at a time. 2017 I, as well as the mortgage advisor, advised against it, given that the new home she wanted went for $820,000 and she still had quite a lot left on her mortgage. In the end, the bank pre-approved her and her boyfriend for $500,000 with the knowledge that the rest of the fees will be covered using the profit from her old home. Fast forward to now, she keeps asking me to come on as a third person. Given that with my good job and with a salary of over $65,000, the pre-approval amount will be higher. The issue is, I am now married, and my husband and I are also saving up to buy a home in the next few years. She dismissed it and said doing this with her will build my credit. And when I'm ready to buy a home, the bank will approve me and she will definitely co-sign with us. Is this a thing? Because she went and told her mortgage advisor that I'm interested. But I don't think she gave her the details. Not only that, I'm pregnant and will be going on maternity leave, which means that it's not the time to think about things like this. Because I will technically be on employment insurance. Which is exactly why my husband and I are waiting until I get back to work. And he gains more seniority in his work. I'm at a loss in what to do because my mom has screwed me over for small amounts of money. So that alone, I don't trust her. But it's the fact she's already telling the mortgage advisor I want in. And she's disregarding the fact that I'm married with her own grandkid on the way. However, she did state doing this will build my credit. And it will be easier to qualify for a new mortgage down the line with my husband. Now for the top advice before reading the update. No, the bank will see you as having a massive liability. This will make it much harder, as in the eyes of the bank, you will already be on the hook for a mortgage. You'd also lose your first-time home buyer's land transfer tax rebate too. Parents of my friends tried to do that with their son at 18, buy a house in his name essentially to save the tax. Luckily, he knew about it and said, hell no. Who the heck are those pathetic excuses for a parent? How freaking low must you be to feel okay about screwing over your own child? They rationalize it somehow. People are very good at that. The mortgage you are on will have to be included in your debt ratios when applying for your own mortgage. Having an existing mortgage included in your debts will make it very, very difficult to obtain your own mortgage. Absolutely do not do this. It will make it harder for you to get a mortgage later, as it will be considered your debt. You will be responsible for the mortgage if she doesn't pay it. When you go to get your own mortgage, her co-signing will be useless because she will also already have a mortgage which will be considered. She needs to buy something within her means. If she is relying on your income to be approved for a higher amount, it is not within her means. And now for the update. Last week, I posted what my mother was trying to do, which was have me co-sign her mortgage. Many people have asked for an update. So yesterday, I spoke with a mortgage advisor who not only admitted that my mom was a difficult client, as she was trying to do the impossible by getting this mortgage, but he also revealed that the reason she needed me to co-sign a mortgage was because she did not want to listen to his recommendation, which was to return the car she had leased, on which the maturity date is almost due, and to not finance a new car until she gets her mortgage funded. Two months max. This is to ensure she does not have too much debt, and that her pre-approval amounts stay the same. Instead of doing that, she wanted me on a mortgage so she can increase the funding approval rate and get a new car financed. My husband and I were disgusted and shocked. The mortgage advisor was very honest and stated that if I get in on this, it will significantly reduce my borrowing power and I will be on the hook for years. He even joked and asked, would you like to stay stuck renting with the inability to borrow and a huge dip on your credit? while she drives the newest fancy cars and lives in a big home. He told us not to do it and think of our future. We're expecting a baby in the fall. To cut it short, most of you are right. She had no intention of helping me in the long run, and it was only to satisfy her wants, while having no issues leaving my husband and baby and I on the hook for almost $1 million. 
I have confronted my mom who has yet to answer my texts, and my husband has adjusted that we cut contact with her. I wanted to take the time to thank you all for your honest advice, and to the mortgage advisor who put reality before money. She states doing this will build my credit for a new mortgage down the line. Big lol. This is advice to give teenagers getting their first student credit cards. Absolutely. This would destroy Opie's credit. Opie would have no chance of getting a mortgage in a few years with $800,000 of debt to their name. And all those first-time home buyers' perks would be gone. But Opie's mom would get a new car. Opie, on a serious note, your mom should look out the buyout cost for her leased vehicle versus the resale value. The used car market is crazy right now. And most people can pay X dollars to buy out their lease then drive the car over to the used car lot and sell it for X plus $5,000 or whatever. That's free money basically, so I highly recommend you look into it. I'm not sure which scenario is worse, that your mother believes this or that she thinks you're stupid enough to buy it. One, you do not need a mortgage to build credit, just a credit card that you never use, paying down would suffice. Two, if you are added on a mortgage slash title, you, plus husband if purchasing together, will lose your first time home buyer credit. Three, just say no. Refuse to sign any documents. Yes, the mortgage advisor spoke to me about a first time home buyer plan and how I would lose it if I co signed this. I knew about this and told my mom. She dismissed it and said, Who cares because my husband would qualify? True, but really? I recall this post and commend you for making this difficult, but not so difficult decision. As a mother-to-be, you've absolutely made a right choice for your family, and like what your own mother was doing for her child. My answer isn't financial, but is this a pattern of behavior for her? Has she always tried to harm you for her own benefit and tried to guilt trip or manipulate you or others to get what she wants? If so, your husband is onto something with a suggestion of cutting contact with her or at least severely limiting it. She will likely continue to harass, shame and guilt you, telling you how you robbed her of her house. You don't need that now with a baby on the way. When I was younger, 21, I got the opportunity to move to the UK after finishing school. It was all against her wishes as she wanted me to stay in Canada for no good reason. I was living with her and forced to pay $1,000 in rent, plus utilities for living in her and finished basement. When I told her I wanted to save and ask her to reduce the rent or give me startup money, she blamed me for being bad with money. At the time, I only made about $1,600 a month. Nevertheless, I rebelled, saved my money, got a second job, got the visa and moved to the UK, which is actually where I met my now husband. When I was there, I was thriving in my own way, a job, apartment, friends, etc. Then about a year later, she would send me WhatsApp messages telling me she's extremely sick and had issues with her nerve muscles which was preventing her to move. She would call me sad and crying. A few months later, I went back only to see she was perfectly healthy and has never been better. She would then ask for money, get me to stay with her and it's all a blur, but I gave up the apartment, paid what was left of the rent and ended up staying in Canada, stagnant and paying her $1,000 plus utilities to stay with her. The only good thing that came from this was that I met my husband. We're now here, and it seems to catch on much quicker to my mom's manipulative tactics. Last story is titled, Update. Am I the a-hole for being upset that my siblings are getting my part of an inheritance but I'm not because I'm a recovering addict? Original post. My parents are pretty wealthy. I'm 26. And from 21 to 25, I was in and out of rehabs. I was abusing so many different kinds of substances, and I wasted so much money. I owed it once, and it destroyed my family to watch me go through that. I am intensely ashamed of who I was as a person, and I have been sober for almost a year. My parents are now approaching their late 60s and have started finalizing their wills and inheritance. Yesterday, they sat me down and told me that I will not be getting any of the inheritance, as they don't trust me not to relapse with all that money suddenly in my possession, and as a result, my siblings will be getting my share of the money. I was pretty upset about this, and I said that they were going to make my siblings rich, while I would get nothing from it and that wasn't fair. I was almost yelling at this point. They told me to calm down, but I was too upset to listen, and I left. 
I called my brother and sister after I left and told them what my parents said, and they said that it was their choice and there wasn't anything they could do. I accused them of just wanted all the money for themselves and not caring about what happened to me. Today, I have my dad texting me that they are worried about me and disappointed in my behavior yesterday. I talked to my sponsor and he said that while anger is understandable, I have to do everything in my power not to ruin the trust I've built with my family over the past year, and acting like an a-hole addict won't help. Sometimes I still have trouble with my reactions to things now that I'm sober. However, I don't feel as though I'm entirely unjustified here. Am I the a-hole for getting upset? Now for the top comments before reading the update. You're the a-hole because you probably spent your share of the inheritance every time they tried to help you. Seriously? Add up every dollar they've spent on your addiction. Or ask them to add it up. And then ask yourself if you deserve any more. Don't forget all the time and emotional labor that goes with all this. How many days off or vacations got sidelined? How many sleepless nights? Emotional slash relationship damage caused by things said or done while Opie was under the influence. Opie, you took up way more than your fair share and way more than the inheritance is even worth. That's a fair point. As a PS, if you stay sober, your parents will treat you more responsibly over time. One year is nothing in recovery. Maybe several years or more down the line, when you're living a respectable life and they see that their money will go into your house, education, or something else which you have built between now and then, they will reconsider. I think timing is a major factor here. It feels like forever. You're the a-hole. Your parents are concerned for your life. Also, your parents are only 60-ish. Thus, there is a good chance that they will be alive for at least 10 years. I believe you as a life expectancy is north of 70. That leaves plenty of time to amend a will. You are only a year out of rehab, so your parents are just making plans for the way things are today. Edit. Just reread that as late 60s, but the point still remains. They have to plan based on today, not based on what could be 10 years from now. But the way things are now won't always be the case. First, congrats on nearly a year. That being said, you spent nearly one-fifth of your life in rehab. I wouldn't blame them for not trusting you yet, especially since I bet you were using before the rehab. I'm guessing your parents paid for that? Not to mention all the attention that had to be put on you. That could have gone to your siblings. Addicts are an Olympic-sized pool's drain on a family's mental health and finances. They worried about you, made sure you were getting help, paid for it, and you repay them by going ballistic about that they won't treat you as if you did nothing to them? Yeah, they did pay for it. And now for the update. My first post wasn't hugely popular, but I wanted to update anyways. After what happened with my parents, I won't lie, I relapsed. I had a weekend where I blacked out. I remember getting back to my apartment and all the drugs and booze I had bought was gone. And it was a Monday morning. It was a lot of stuff. I scared myself so much I ended up calling my parents saying that they were right. And I remembered everyone's advice on my last post and I apologized for how I treated them. And that they were right in not giving me any of their money. I'm now three weeks sober and I took Reddit's advice and made a compromise with my parents in regards to my inheritance. If I remain at least five years sober and submit to a bi-monthly drug test, they will reconsider my part of the money. I hope they do reconsider. I know I have a lot of work to do and I still have a lot of selfishness to overcome, but I wanted to thank everyone for helping me try to realize that. Here's to three weeks and more. You're three weeks sober. You relapsed in the past and will likely again. It's pretty normal and expected to fall back. And when you enter group therapy and MAT therapy, they will talk about this with you. You can't and won't beat this alone, you need help. And it's okay to ask for it and use the services available to you. Millions of Americans have substance problems, and it's more common than you think. But there is only one legit solution. You can't expect your family to trust you after three weeks. You can't expect them to trust you ever again. It's fully up to them when they will bring that trust back, and you can't do anything about that. Get help. Join the addiction thread. Talk to an addiction doctor and get the ball rolling. They will help you with the withdrawal, family issues, and mental issues caused by the abuse. But most importantly, they will get to the core of your addiction so it can be properly addressed. Five minutes after I took my first dose of buprenorphine, 
Pops absolve. I never had another craving again. The withdrawal issues washed away, and when I fully gave myself to the program, fully stopped self-diagnosing myself and let the professional doctor do what they are trained in, soon I was honest to them and me. The process became insanely easy. When you fight it, when you try to justify it, when you lie to your doctor or think you know your body best, then you fail. Your parents owe you nothing. It seems like they already saved your life once and spent a lot of money doing it. Make your own money. Not everyone has rich parents. You should just appreciate their unconditional love. They worked hard their whole lives for their money. You were not entitled to it, even if you were sober. Also, be sober for you, not for money. Abso freaking lutely couldn't agree more. Being sober for money will kill you when the money comes. Addiction might take a break while you're sober, but it will pick up where it left off and can oftentimes pick up steam for lost ground if it gets traction. A sudden influx of money is almost always a destructive force if your foundation for sobriety is built on anything but a solid cornerstone. You more or less prove their point. At a first hurdle, you immediately used again. If they give you a penny more, you'll just relapse. Way to completely miss the emotional impact of your parents saying they have no faith in you. They could have put the money in a trust and made it accessible in small amounts. Conditional, unverified, and continuing sobriety. They could have not given anything. But side of the fact, Opie had already spent his share of the inheritance in all the rehab and care during their bad years. But no. They basically just told him they don't think he'll amount to anything ever again. It probably relapsed too. Not that I expect better from this sub. The last thread was a judgmental garbage fire, and I'm sure this one will be too. Huge amounts of people just straight up telling Opie is guaranteed to relapse again it is a piece of crap for doing so. That'll sure help him move forward. It's one thing to tell someone to adjust expectations and prepare for a struggle to maintain sobriety. It's quite another for hundreds of people to crapple over the vulnerable person at their lowest point. Nice job, everyone. Hope the self-righteous high was worth it.